praise again. I said, come on, let's give God some praise. Praise him like you mean it, amen. Praise him like you brought me through 20 and 21, amen. Praise him like you didn't know how to get up this morning, but he started you on your way. Praise him for the ailments that he helped you to overcome this morning. Somebody ought to give God some praise this morning. Glory by the word said that Jesus chose us. Amen. We didn't choose him. Amen. I thank God for his choice. Amen. Amen. I thank God that he chose me. And I know you should thank God that he chose you as well. Amen. And so we thank God for his great love, his great mercy, and all that he has done for us. Amen. Amen. As I've said, we've crossed over another year. Yes. Amen. Amen. And God still has work for all of us to do. Amen. Amen. And that's what we need to be looking forward to is to do the work Amen. of God. Amen. All that he has planned for 20 and 22, we need to be available for his service. Amen. 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 Uh, thank God for another year. Life, health, and strength. Thank God for my wife and our family and all that we've been able to do together. Thank God that... We are still here in the midst of Mount Calvary serving. Amen. Amen. Um, and I thank God for each and every one of you. We've had some ups. We've had some downs. Uh, we've had some people to go on home to be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. But God is still good. Amen. 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 And as David said, he can't come back. But I'm going that way. Yes. Amen. Right. And so the arrow of time will affect all of us. Yes. We're moving in one direction. Amen. And we just have to glorify him. I'm reminded sometimes of uh, one of our forefathers in the scripture, Jacob, mm -hmm. when he was an old man and he got a chance to meet his grandchildren for the first time. Mm -hmm. and Joseph, when he was down in Egypt, the Bible says that he was old and he leaned up on his bed. Mm -hmm. And the scripture says he leaned on his staff and he worshiped. Mm -hmm. That always just tickled my spirit because a man that had lived so long and seen so much, and near the end of his life, he got up on the edge of his bed and he leaned on his staff and he just worshiped. Yes, sir. I'm sure he, he reminded God of all the times that he thought he was done with. Yes, sir. When, 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 when Joseph had, was gone and he thought he was dead, the Bible says his heart stood still. Yes. In other words, it's like he suffered a heart attack. But guess what? God brought him on through that yes, too. No. Uh, God is good. And sometimes we've got to, even if we're not that old, sometimes we just need to get up on our worshiping cane. Sometimes we just need to get up on our worshiping staff and just lean on our staff and just say, God, I thank you. I thank you that you brought me a mighty long way. I thank you for my dad. I thank you for my mom. I thank you, Lord God, for my spouse and loved ones, my children. We've had some ups and downs, but God, you've been right there with us. Sometimes we just got to give God the praise. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Our theme for this year, of course, as I said, is mind skin. Rhymes with wine skin on it. Our mind skin, we be in transformation through what? Inspiration. You got to be inspired. God inspires us to do more than we think we can do. Oh, there's been some times I thought maybe, well, might not be able to do this, but God said you're standing in your own way. I've already blessed you to be able to do this. We've got to understand that God has made us conquer us because Jesus Christ has already overcome. We don't have to bow down to anything less. Oh, I hear the apostle. I'm pulling down the stronghold. Those things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Anything in your life that stands between you and the Lord, you got the authority and power to pull it all down. We need to pull it all in 2022. But I thank him anyhow for all that he has done, and I'm sure you do the same. Let us take our attention to the book of 2 Samuel, the 15th chapter, 1 through 6, and then we'll go to the 18th chapter, and I'll read 9 through 18. In the 15th chapter of 2 Samuel, After this, Absalom got himself a chariot, 
horses and 50 men to run before him. He would get up early and stand beside the road leading to the city gate. Whenever anyone had a grievance to bring before the king for settlement, Absalom called out to him and asked, What city are you from? If he replied, Your servant is from one of the tribes of Israel, Absalom said to him, Look, your claims are good and right, but the king does not have anyone to listen to you. He added, if only someone would appoint me judge in the land, then anyone who had a grievance or dispute could come to me, and I would make sure he received justice. When a person approached to bow down to him, Absalom reached out his hand, took hold of him, and kissed him. Absalom did this to all the Israelites who came to the king for settlement, for a settlement. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. 18, 9. Absalom was riding on his mule when he happened to meet David's soldiers. When the mule went under the tangled branches of a large oak tree, Absalom's head was caught fast in the tree. The mule under him kept going, so he was suspended in midair. One of the men saw him and informed Joab. He said, I just saw Absalom hanging in an oak tree. You just saw him, Joab jo 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 explained. Why didn't you strike him to the ground right there? I would have given you ten silver pieces and a bell. The man replied to Joab, even if I had the weight of a thousand pieces of silver in my hand, I would not raise my hand against the king's son. For we heard the king command you uh, Abishai and Etai protect the young man Absalom for me if I had jeopardized my own life and nothing is hidden from the king you would have abandoned me Joab said I'm not going to waste time with you he then took three spears in his hand and thrust them into Absalom's heart while he was still alive in the old oak tree and ten young men who were with Joab's armor bearer surrounded Absalom, struck him, and killed him. Afterwards, Joab blew the ram's horn, and the, tro and the troops broke off their pursuit of Israel because Jacob restrained them. Joab, I'm sorry, restrained them. They took Absalom, threw him in a large pit in the forest, and piled a huge mound of stones over him, and all Israel fled each to his tent. Last verse. When he was alive, Absalom had, re had erected for himself a pillar in the king's valley, for he had said, I have no son to preserve my memory of my name. So he gave the pillar his name. It is still called Absalom's monument today. Father, we're thankful for your word. We're thankful for all that you have done. We're thankful for your grace and your mercy. We're just thankful, Lord. And I ask Holy Spirit, guide us. Continually through this year, give us wisdom and knowledge. Draw us closer in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For a subject this morning, I would like to preach. There are no fakes in God's art gallery. Amen. There are no fakes in God's art gallery. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 30 and 8 will give me a text to reach from. Proverbs 30 and 8, just a small portion of it says, Lord, keep falsehood and lies far from me. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. When you understand this from ancient Hebrews and how they thought, what the Proverbs were saying was, keep me from being a fake. Mm -hmm. I don't think any of us would disagree that a liar is a fake. I don't, I don't think we would disagree. The Proverbs want us to understand that 
There are no fakes in God's art gallery. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we come looking good and sharp and pretty and all of this, but God sees your heart. Mm -hmm. There just ain't no fakes in God's art gallery. Mm -hmm. And the Proverbs want us to understand that this should be one of our prayers that we should have or the most important prayer of our life. God, keep me from being a phony. Keep me from being a fake. Keep me from pretending one thing, protecting one thing, but really, I'm something else. Oh, somebody ought to give them some praise. I find that we pray all kinds of prayers. We pray all the time. We pray for our loved ones. We pray when we need a job, need money, need a light bill paid. But how many of us ever pray, Lord, keep me from being a fake? I think that in the house of God, it's more important for us to watch how we live our lives and how we present ourselves and making sure that what we are presenting is actually the truth about who we are. Oh, somebody, I ain't going to get no praise this morning. We see here in Absalom, in the 15th chapter of 2 Samuel, Absalom, he had been at odds with his dad. He had actually killed one of his stepbrothers or half-brothers, I would say, because his half-brother had raped his little sister. And his dad had banished him or, or he fled and, and they talked David into bringing him back. And when David brought him back to the city, Absalom wasn't content with just playing a minor role. He wasn't content with just sitting on the sideline. Uh, he came back and he had another plan. And the Bible says that he got 50 men to run in front of him. Now ain't that something? Even though he hadn't been appointed anything, he put up 50 men as if he was some big shot in the, in the community. Oh, uh, come on now. Sometimes in our church life, and how we are in church. Uh, we, we, we find ourselves sometimes acting just like Absalom. We're not the pastor. We're not the deacon. We don't sit on no auxiliaries and no boards. But yet we try to get folk around us to kind of go along with what we got going on. In other words, we try to build up our own reputation. But I, I say this sometimes. Sometimes in our church life, there are folk that hadn't been elected that hadn't been appointed, that hadn't got no position in the church. And what they try to create is a second church where they are the pastor, the deacon, and the leadership. You see, when Absalom came back, he wasn't content to sit under one king. He wasn't content to go along with what the king said. He wanted to set up an auxiliary ministry. He wanted to set up another kingship. He wanted to be the leader and the person in charge. But in order for him to accomplish his goal, just like all of the, the followers of the devil, they got to mask around as if they're ministers of light, angels of light, as, as Paul says. They've got to mask around and pretend that they want thing so that they can trick a few folk into going along with what they got going on. <laughs> you see, Absalom, he pretended to be some big shot because of the fact that he was the king's son. He put 50 men in front of him and the Bible says he'd get up early and stand at the gate. Now you know most of us don't like to get up early and do too many things. And that should have been a sign right there when this boy was getting up early. He'd stand at the gate. And when he'd stand at the gate, he'd wait for people to come to, to, to bring their problems. See, the thing about a fake is it feeds into your emotional discontentment. You see, the faith is, is him. And what he's doing is he's waiting to hear the grievance of what a person's got a grieving about. And then he's going to go along with it as if he really fought and say, oh yeah, if I was the king or if I was appointed judge, guess what I would do? I would hear your case right away. Now the enemy, when he comes, He's not looking for somebody that's in opposition of him. He's looking for somebody that's in discontented about what's going on around them. When the enemy comes, the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they in agreement? You see, when the enemies come, he's looking for something in you that is very discontent about something that's going on. And then he's going to feed that hunger you got. He's going to feed it to the point that now you think that he is on your side. How did 
they do in church. Whenever folk come and let's just say you had a, a problem with one of the officers of the church. And you go and you tell somebody else that you had a problem with one of the officers of the church. Now they got one or two ways they can respond. They can either tell you, well, pray about it and let God work it out. Or they'll say, oh, I know what you mean. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I say, I know what you mean. Where the road going to then? I know what you mean. I've been feeling the same way. I've had the same problem. I see exactly what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, we need to find a way to get rid of them or get them out of office or whatever. What they're doing now is going along with your discontentment and pretty you find yourself outside of the will of God. Why? Because you've been bamboozled by what? A fake. A somebody that pretended like they was going along, but all along they wanted to take advantage of you. Oh, come on now, Saints. Come on now, Saints. So he stood at the gate and he was, mm, yeah, I know what you mean. And I'll take care of that just as soon as you put me in power. I'll take care of it. Now, if you would have been thinking, You'd have been like, well, you're the king's son. You can take care of it now. Mm -hmm. You can just go to, no, that ain't what he wanted. He wanted power for himself. You see, what you got to understand is, is that a fake looks like the real thing. Yes, Amen. A fake shout all day as long as you shout. Amen. All right. <laughs> they shout too. A fake can quote scripture just like you quote scripture. A fake can say amen just like you can say amen. And in other words, you don't know that, that it's a fake at the time because you're just feeling so good about the fact you got somebody else that agrees with you when you shout amen. Oh, yes, sir. I reminded as a young boy, I used to watch a lot of Fred Sanford. Fred Sanford had a guest that came on one time. And the guest got on on his rug and was wasting stuff on him. And Fred Simon said, hey man, don't mess up my genuine imitation. <laughs> Persian rug. Don't mess up my genuine imitation. Persian rug. And as I got to thinking about fakes, fakes are genuine fakes. And what do you mean by that? You see that genuine in their objective. But they fake in what you think they mean to you. Yes, sir. But they're genuine in their objective. You see, he was genuine in his objective to overthrow his dad. But he was fake to the people because the people could not read the strokes of his tongue to understand that he was a fake. You see, when the enemy comes, he's in the church. When the enemy comes and sits beside you, the enemy doesn't come and say, Hi, I'm the devil, I'm glad to meet you. No, the enemy comes masquerading as a saint, comes masquerading as a woman or a man of God, sitting down right beside you, imitating everything you're doing. And then guess what? You never know that they are really fakes. Yes, sir. But there ain't no fakes in God's gallery. Amen. So anyway, let me move forward so we can get to this story. So he uh, pretends like he's concerned about it. Oh, and how many of us, even if you got a bad doctor, terrible doctor, as long as he's nice to you, you will make all kind of reasons why you need to get back over there. I like him. He's so nice and gentle, so calm. He's just good to me. Your health's still going down. See, 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 the thing about us is we don't want to call out fakes. Mm -hmm. Even when we perceive that something ain't right, we don't want to call it out. I had somebody tell me one time that a prophet just came and told them, you going your children are going to take good care of you. Mm -hmm. Now that you're old, they're going to take real good care of you. The woman said, I didn't want to say to her. Mm -hmm. See, the woman was 80 years old. <laughs> She said, but I didn't want to say to her, I don't even have no kids. <laughs> See, God ain't got no face in his art gallery. But we, because we can't afford the real thing, because we don't want to hear the real thing, we'll hang up all the fakes all around in our homes, in our churches, everywhere, just so it'll look like we got real church. So it'll look like we got real religion. So it'll look like we got the real Holy Ghost. So it'll look like we ain't nothing but a bunch of fakes. Just sitting and clapping our hands, knowing folk are lying to us, telling all kinds of stuff. But yet we refuse to call them out. Because if we call them out, I don't want to disturb the church. Oh, you ain't got no church. It was for a face. If everything 
everything in there is fakes. <laughs> but he was there. And the Bible says, and he stole the people's hearts. He stole their hearts. He moved their hearts from David to himself. And, and the thing about faith is, the Bible calls faith and stealing. Ooh. The Bible calls lying stealing. How is that, preacher? You see, when you are fake and when you lie, you are stealing. Because you're stealing a person's perfect opinion about the real you. You've given them a faith and they've accepted that, but yet the real you is still behind the faith. So you're stealing their opinion. You're stealing their spiritual worth because of the fact why? You have not given them the real thing. You have not given them the genuine thing. And now you are fake. The Bible says he stole something. I'm coming to an end. Said he stole something. Some of us sitting here today have got some faith in our life. We bought them on sale and we didn't even check to see if they were real. Oh my God. Come on, somebody. When we look at Absalom, and I'm going to turn the story. So he stole the people. But the thing about God is this. God don't have no fakes in his art gallery. He doesn't have no fakes in his art gallery. God is God. He's not going to have fakers around him. He's not going to have fakers. He, he don't need worship from a fake in order to be glorified. You see, God is not going to allow us to fake him into thinking that he's something because we are faking that he's something. God is genuine, so God don't have no fakes in his art gallery. So here we are. Let me tell you what happened to phonies when they are discovered. So now Absalom, he was riding and his daddy was on the hunt for him. But his daddy had told them, don't hurt the boy, he's just a kid. Let him get away. Let just surround him, neutralize him. But he was there and he was riding. Isn't it amazing how God worked? Yeah. His hair got caught. His head got caught mm. in the branches. And he was suspended in the air. Mm. You see, if you're faking, you don't know how God's going to catch you. Uh -huh. Amen. Oh. <laughs> you don't know how God's going to catch you. Come on, God. You see, he's looking for the army to catch him. He's looking for the enemies that might tell where he at. But my God, he didn't see that branch coming. And the branch hung him up high, suspended him in midair. In other words, he was so suspended he couldn't help himself. You see, a lot of us have faked a long time. And then we finally got caught by the hand of God. We suspended him in midair and we could not help ourselves. But let me tell you what happened to the faith. He was there and he was hanging in midair. And I know he probably was saying, oh, I hope I can get down before somebody find me. I know sometimes we do some stuff we say, I hope I can get out of this before somebody find out. And so he's suspended in mid air. And while he was suspended in mid air, here they come. So when, when the guy came back and tells Joab, I found the fake. Joab said, well, why didn't you kill him? You know, that's our problem. We refuse to do the tough thing. When you find out something is a fake, who do we want to do? Cover it up. Uh -huh. Amen. We don't want to deal with it. So here it is. He said, well, why didn't you kill him? The man said, man, you know who that is. I'm not messing with him. Joy, I said, I'd have gave you a thousand pieces of silver and a bell. He said, man, he said, I wouldn't care what you gave me. I'm not messing with that. Okay. So anyway, Joab said, man, enough of this. And Joab kills the faith. You see, because Joab understood what God's image was all about. Now get to what I want to preach about. You see, you are the image of God. You see, God has called you to represent his son. And any time you are faking, you are cheating in the glory of God. God is saying to you that you are a Christian. You are called in the name of Jesus. People will respect you because you said you are coming in the name of the Lord. But you cannot be a fake. Because when you're faking, when you're phony, when you're lying and not telling the truth, you are exposing God to the cheating of the saints, of everybody around. Because then folks will say, oh, I thought they was a Christian. Oh, look at how they acting. Look at what they say. Look at how they talk. Look at what they 
looking at. Look at what they're watching. You see, God expects us to be just like him. He expects us to be the real thing. He don't expect us to be faking. He don't expect us to be fraudulent because you can't get in the kingdom of God if you are a fake because God don't have no faith in his heart. God only has one picture in his art gallery. Mm -hmm. Oh, you ain't got to spend all day in there. It's just one picture in God's art gallery. Yes. And anybody, if you say that picture is you, then you show up just like Absalom. You don't build yourself a monument. And then you don't call it by your name. God ain't got but one picture in his art gallery. And that picture is Jesus Christ. That's the only picture that God has in his art gallery. And you are in the art gallery when you are in Christ. You are in Christ. You are in the art gallery. But that's the image that God has in his art gallery. Why? Because Jesus never faked. He never was a phony. He never lied or cheated or steal. Jesus was the real thing. And if you got Jesus today, you got to be the real thing too. Because folk are depending on you to be the real thing. They depending on you. Folk come to you for advice. You're not supposed to feed into that discontentment. You're supposed to give them what does say the law. If folk come to you hurting, you're not supposed to take advantage of them. You're supposed to help heal them, solve their problems, and help them along in Christ. If folk depend on you at the church to handle God's money, you should handle the way that God wants you to handle and do things right above the table, up in the open, where folk can see that you honor God. The Apostle Paul says, we have put aside all the hidden trickery. We put that stuff to the side because that stuff is shameful. But we come to you like open letters. We come to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. No hidden moments, no hidden motives. All we want to do is save a few folk. We want to help a few folk to get along the way. You got to be genuine. Ain't no fake in God's art gallery. You can't fake your way along. You can't fake it till you make it. Because you're not going to make it. you got to serve God in genuineness with a good heart, a kind heart. you got to be just like Christ who went around doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. You know the devil enjoys you being a fake. Oh, we got some examples of what fake going to get you. The man was killed hanging in mid-air. But we ain't even got to stop there. We can look in the book of Acts and see where the seven sons of Sceva, they were faking and phony. They wanted to cast out demons in Jesus' name. But what you don't see there is that they was using some kind of magical arts. And then they was using Jesus' name to justify what they were doing. And all of a sudden, they ran across this man from Sceva. And they said, look, oh, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preached, we tell you to come out. And the devil said, hold up a minute. Hold up a minute. I know Jesus. And I know Paul. But I'm stretching through my index. I can't find your name nowhere. I'm stretching through the phone book. I don't see you nowhere around. I'm searching through everything I know. I'm going through the yellow pages. I'm going through the white pages. But I can't find your name. I got a question for you, sir. And who are you? You see, the enemy don't respect no phony. The enemy jumped out of seven sons of steel and jumped on them and beat them down. Some of the problems you got right now is because you are fake. Some of the stuff you're going through right now is because you ain't real. Some of the stuff you're going through right now is because you didn't give up the old way of doing stuff and still calling on Jesus. That's why you're suffering. But God ain't got no fakes. Say it again, preacher. God ain't got no fakes. He ain't got no fakes in his heart, Calvin. Because thus said the Lord, I am God and I am him alone. You can't build yourself up and build you a monument. You got to be humble. Submit yourself to the way God has set it up. And then you'll be real with God. And God will keep it real with you. Yeah.